I got the truck warming up. I had parked it next to the house because we had a nor'east storm and the trees out back were all blowing down so I parked it up here so it would be safer. So She's headed off to work and we are headed to go do something really cool today. Yes we are. Uh huh. So let's get to it. Okay we have arrived. Look at that shiny thing. Just got it warming up. We're gonna haul these stumps today. All right, introduce yourself for us. Hi guys, I'm James, uh, Roberti Excavation, located on Cape Cod. Brand new, 14 hours on it. Got it last week from Milton Cat. Milton Cat, and um, yeah, you're, when I showed up here, you're literally taking the plastic off to see. Yep, brand new, brand <laughs> new. Literally, maiden voyage. <laughs> So you had some time, you had some time to run this yesterday. I see you stumped all of this. Your initial thoughts on it? I think it's definitely got some power, great machine. Um, perfect size for what I'm looking for. Um, I'm really a one man band, so I went with the 317 next gen. Has all the technology, E-Fence, 2D grade control, um, load count, etc. A little more horsepower, a um, little more weight than the GC model, which, you know, is a little, less expensive but um you know you get what you pay for at the end of the day see get what you pay for now he's got is that a standard bucket james standard and uh 60 inch grading bucket and he has a 60 inch grading bucket and he got the progressive length thumb he got the nice thumb too um the one that doesn't have the caps I, I don't, I've seen the one with the uh, tooth caps on the thumb. I actually, my personal preference is I just, I like this thumb a lot. This is, look at the way it fits right around the coupler. And it will chase the bucket all the way back. So when you fully uncurl, this thumb will go all the way with it. So there's no accidentally you know, like my machine, you know, granted my machine's a mini, but my machine will get to a certain point where when you uncurl, the thumb will stop. And sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, you'll drop stuff. This one here, you can chase it all the way back. And it's a quick coupler. Cat 317. Backup camera. Or, I mean, work camera, I guess, because you don't you don't have to actually be backing up. It you can have it on all the time. Uh it's almost should be called a swing camera or a work rear work camera i'm not sure everybody calls them backup cameras but this is cool they come off the side now i almost don't want to step on it so shiny plastic fuel tank well you can step up there and then engine compartment handle. So you have all this platform and this railing and everything. So that's cool. I really dig that. I don't want to step on it because it's shiny. And it says not to step here anymore. You used to step up on the machines from the front. I'm really digging it. Minus the DEF. Well, yeah, we're not DEF people yet, but eventually it's... It's going to happen, and we're going to have to get something. Milton Cat. I used to uh, work for a company that moves stuff for Milton Cat. Nice, nice. All right, so we were just talking about it, and um, there's a lot of reasons why you pick a brand. But as a young guy starting, this is your first business. Yes. You are young. What is your age? Tell us 26. all. 26. He's 26. That's right. He doesn't have any of this stuff white stuff yet yet 
So for a young guy starting out your first business, you chose to go with Caterpillar, which I grew up with Caterpillar stuff. I like their stuff. I have a Komatsu. I do love Komatsu right now. Komatsu is my brand, I guess, because I own one. But you, on the other hand, you didn't have a brand. You were starting out fresh. So what are your reasons why you were gravitated towards Caterpillar? So I, before I started my own company, I worked for a large contractor down here, one of the biggest companies in the area. Had a fleet of Komatsu, a fleet of cats. So I'm very familiar with both machines. Great service, great dealer support from both dealers in our area. Uh, so for me, it really broke down to when I started a new business. Um, I originally got a cat skid steer and cat mini. So I was kind of already in with the dealership, had that dealer support, had, had my sales guy already set up, who's been great in the area. Um, and I mean, I went through all the options, you know, I priced out a bunch of machines. Um, obviously I'm a young kid getting approved for a machine like this is a process in itself. Um, cat made it simple. I mean, they were offering great finance options. Um, almost zero money down for a machine that's you know an extensive amount of money. And for me, um, the technology is what sold me. I mean, like I said, I'm a one man band. So being able to you know, grade a cellar hole um, from the cab of the machine using the grade control rather than hopping out in and out of the machine all day, checking a grade rod, um, you know, time is money. And to me, that was one of the main reasons I went with this machine as well as, uh, you know, cat service. You can almost get any part overnighted to a location that's less than 15 minutes away from us. So that's that's ideal as well all right so dealer support for us is a big one because uh, i do have a komatsu excavator and our komatsu dealer is a little bit farther away but like james was saying it's like 15 minutes to the parts um they only sell parts there um the warehouse was called a warehouse um caterpillar has uh, a place near us where you can go and you can just get any part you want right away um it's separate from where their machine dealership is but once you own one of these parts parts you know uh things happen you know hose lets go you need a tooth cap you rip one off on a rock being able to get parts is a big deal so i would have to agree with him that going with a dealer that's close to you with parts is a is a big big one also and, and as you know Steve small business like us it's not like you're a huge contractor that has a bunch of stuff sitting in the shop I mean if this machine's down my business is down so having those parts is is very important yeah it's definitely key for parts I'm, I'm starting to learn that as my stuff is getting older and uh, as you will find out uh, someday that things wear out and you spend your weekends working on stuff now you went with I, I really love the progressive link thumb that you you uh, went with. I've seen some other different designs of thumbs, but now when you were specking this out with Caterpillar, they gave you the option to pick whatever thumb you wanted. Yes. And that thumb there, uh, I was telling them, will chase the bucket all the way around. Correct. Now, have you tried, you said you had a 60 inch digging, uh, smooth, yes. smooth bucket? Yes. Um, have you had it on the machine yet? I have not, no. Okay, so that one still has the paint. Yeah. So you have 14 hours on this um, yeah, today. Yeah, it came, came with about eight, so I've only put about six hours on it. I mean, as you can see, I kind of stumped this out a little bit. Um, we had a big storm on Cape Cod last week, so lifting trees off houses and stuff was really all this machine I've seen, and it had plenty of power. Um, it's compact enough where, you know, you can get in those tight areas. So, um, so far, I, I really, really like it. So today is Monday, and you've had this machine since... I got the machine on uh, Wednesday of last week. Wednesday of last so week. So not even a week. So today's going to be um, a pretty good, pretty good uh, test for, you know, loading stumps and everything. But yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? No, Friday. You were here or Saturday? So Saturday I was here. Um, had about 30 of these big pine stumps and was able to take out all of them in about 30 minutes. 30 minutes now so, coming from a guy that had a mini that I would have been here for a full day I mean obviously it's the big leagues but you know, yeah makes a difference time is money now as far as like um so when I met you we worked at the construction uh, road paving company correct and you did layouts yep so you're like a techno what I would call you're a techie guy right yep. okay so on this machine here have you played with the fencing or the GPS yet? I have at all. 
so something we can get into today definitely yeah so we're gonna we're gonna work on getting some of these stumps out of here and um then after that we're probably gonna go through it and he's going to play with a little bit of the fencing if you don't know what that is that's do you want to explain it since it's your machine sure so um on these new next gen excavators uh part of they're calling it an e-fence so what you can do is like let's say you're working on the side of this house beside me here you can leave the bucket um say a foot off the side of the house and lock that in as a as a horizontal swing fence so you could be spinning around and if you're not paying attention and swing as hard as you can and that bucket will lock where you set it one foot off the house no matter what that being said while you have that for the horizontal swing you also have that for a vertical um you know lift as well as as you can use it with the grade control so you don't over dig too much but it's nice you know if you're working in the street and you're under a power line um, being able to set that height so you know um, even you know working in traffic swinging um, you know I know most operators you know you guys don't really need to worry about that kind of stuff but it, it really you know is, is a nice feature I have used it on um, 325 and um, I think Mike's Mike's machine has it I have used it and I, I for whatever reason I couldn't get used to it yep. because you know just old I guess I'm getting old um, and every time it goes over and stops, my brain says, what, what's wrong? And it takes me a second to go, oh, there's nothing wrong. It's doing what it's supposed to. So that's something that I would encourage you starting out to get very familiar with so you don't end up like me going, hey, hold on a second. Yeah. You know, I would use it as much as you, much as you can or just enough to get comfortable with it so yeah. you don't end up like me, you know, feeling like an old fool you know and i think the good thing about it too is it's as you're going it's it's a gradual stop so you're not getting that like abrupt oh what did i hit you know it's, it's yeah it'll gradually slow down to that point the way the way it felt to me was that it cuts the stick out a little bit early yeah and then the swing motor it will come to a slow you know like the stick goes like uh i call it the stick but the control goes almost like the best way to describe it is, you know when you're pumping your gas and you get almost to the limit mm -hmm. and then the pump slows down? Yep. And then it no, stops? No, that's exactly what the, the, yeah. the pump is Yeah, it's like that. Yep. So, let's um let's get to work here because um we are on this man's dime. He did hire us to haul mm -hmm. some stumps out, but he was generous enough to let us film this. So, let's get to work.
First impressions. Um, my first impressions of it is it's extremely comfortable um, when you're sitting in it. Uh, the, the, the cab has a lot of leg room. I, I really like that. You, you can sit back and still see everything around you. It's very responsive. It's like right there. I really like it. It's uh, it's fast, but it's not like jerky fast. It's it's like smooth fast. Like if you wanted to, like I'm going really s slow touching it. The controls just barely moving them. But like you can tell, like if you were in an open area, like he probably was taking these thumbs up. You could just be as fast as you want. I bet this thing is crazy fast just hurling. Um, the power is something that uh, you can tell when you pick up. I mean, a lot of these stumps are huge. Well, I picked them up. The thing barely, you know, barely struggles, barely tips over. Um, I like it. I really like it. And it's got that new cat smell. Oh, you know what I, I like about cat too is, is they add, like if you wanted a hammer or an implement of any other kind, you can lock the thumb in the up position. Um, I worked at a company, I actually worked with James at a company where we actually put um, another implement on the machine. It was a 325F, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you turn that lever, it used to be you had to have tools and I've seen guys ratchet strap their thumbs up and everything, which, which is what I would do if I had an older machine and then the thumb was clanging around and everything. But these ones here, you can actually lock that and that and divert, divert the juice. Let's call it the juice, but it's the hydraulic. You can divert it to here. So the button that runs the thumb will now run, you know, a spare implement. All this here, see these wires that go in here? This is how his integrated grade control works and i believe this machine may be equipped for to plug in gps also so it's kind of high up there but you can see the sensors so this machine knows where its stick is at all time this is the stick that is the boom you have another sensor at the top of the boom up there right by the light and that tells the machine's computer where the boom is in position to the house so those who don't know the house is basically like the cab and the engine and the counterweight spins on the table on top of the undercarriage so that's what all those wires and sensors are that's to let the machine know and then you have to program in or select which bucket you have on this too correct for the for the grade control because it all goes off the teeth of the bucket the height of the bucket so that's the one thing honestly that's a pain is if you got a new bucket especially if it's not a cat branded bucket, um, you have to calibrate it. Um, luckily when this came from the factory, the two buckets I got at cat did all the calibration for the grade control. Um, but yeah, that takes some time if you were to get a new bucket, you know, you gotta measure it up, do offsets, like you gotta do it old school with a tape measure, so. Yeah, well luckily you don't have to worry about that cause uh, they've, done all the, uh, they've done all that for you. So uh, where we live, you can, you could probably, you. You know, once you get all your stumps and all your, you know, like concrete or whatever. It's all sand. You can use the grading bucket. The, the one thing I would probably like to invest in in the future is a hydraulic uh, grading cleanup bucket. Oh, yeah, like a tilt bucket. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so we, if I were to get that, that would have to go be all calibrated again. Yeah, yeah. You should look in it. It was, not, it was nice. The mic had that on that yep. 325F.
right, so this is the uh, 2D grade control system of the new cat. So your point of target is the left bucket, uh, the left tooth on the bucket. That's your red mark there. You can set it to the center or the right side of the bucket. I like it on the left side because it's easier to see. So you're gonna set here. So you wanna set a benchmark, obviously, to get your depth. So you hit the bucket, you put the bucket there at this button. So now it's telling you that you're at grade. So now let's say you're digging a, I mean, I don't want to go too deep on this property, so I'll, you know, I'll do a foot, but let's say you're digging a foundation for X, Y, and Z target depth. So you go to target depth. And then you want to go, um, so hit plus or minus. So now you're going down one foot. Hit okay. And now it knows, so watch now. Go on the sticks and try to. As you dig down, it's telling him how close he is to grade. So he's on grade right where the bucket's sitting there. So right there is grade. Yep. Right. You're a little lower than grade. A little lower. Right there is grade. There's a, there's a sound alarm too that'll tell you. It gets kind of annoying after a while, but. Right, so <clears throat> now, see it as he lifts with the bucket. Let me go out farther, we'll do a different spot. It's see the same now, thing. See now it's telling him, you know, it's measuring how high your bucket is off the ground. But even if you wanted to hold that grade further up, so he's a foot. Foot and a quarter from where he needs to be. See the number as he goes down with the bucket. Gets closer to grade. I really got to practice uh, holding it there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So it'll tell you the grade. So like, I'm sure with the, with the smooth tooth, uh, the smooth bucket, that will be, you know, not in this crappy ground we're at now because there was a lot of stuff here. But I'm sure when you put the smooth tooth bucket on it and you're pulling back, you'll be able to watch these numbers and you'll be able to hold it at a foot like, you know, really well versus like you know the tooth bucket with some uh, and you can do it you can line it up with the with the fence control oops sorry that's a payload you can line it up with the fence control so it's great it's on so you can see the lights i'm gonna pull down in and then boom that's great that's great right let me go down a little down, 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 right there. Boom, green lights. So that's great. And then if you do this, if you do the, the fence as a floor, turn the floor on. Now it shouldn't, now it shouldn't allow you to dig any deeper. No, stick is dead. Yeah, Not so, that, so that's how you can Obviously the sound gets annoying, but that's how you can work it with the grade control. So when you get your target depth, as you're digging up, you know? Yep. So if you had a gas line or something and you knew it was at that level mm -hmm. and you wanted to make sure your operator, let's say you were like a foreman, which you used to be, you could jump in the machine and say, listen, let me set this for you. I don't want you going below this. And just let the guy be a lever puller, and, yes. you know, and you don't have to worry about your guy ripping out the gas line or something. Like say you're putting, like remember we used to put in catch bases mm -hmm. next to. The, the only the only thing important to remember is that this is 2D control. So it doesn't know, it's not 3D, which they, which they do have with the Trimble system. So it just doesn't know where the machine is at in the world. You know, it has its its buckets and the sensors measured, calibrated. So it's important to note that as soon as you track, you have to reset what they call either a touch point or a new benchmark so the machine can adjust 
So right. You, say you back up onto a pile or, you know, a, the machine with the 2D control wouldn't account for that. So that's something you have to be careful of. Right. So like when I was working with Mike with the 325, uh, what we were doing is, is we were using um, concrete structure and we were just remembering on the corner of that concrete structure was basically like our bench point. Exactly. You know, there's no elevation numbers. We were just remembering it. So every time we tracked the machine, mm -hmm. we would just go back and retouch that retouch point. That. Exactly. So it's not, it's not. And it could be, it could be anything on, on, on site. It could be, you know, that stone wall in front of us you could use as a touch point. Um, it could be on, if you're digging a cellar hole, it could be the uh, hub that the engineer places. Um, you know, it really can be anything as a touch point. It's just really just a point of reference so the machine can height differentiate the height because it doesn't know, like I said, where it's sitting. In the right. I, I remember um, a guy jumping in the machine and moving it and everybody being upset because they're like, oh, no. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't touch it or you move or you moved it now we got to reset it and touch it so you have to remember that when you're going to move your tracks or your position which I, and i think the easiest way that you're you know if you're digging a cellar hole and you're constantly having to move and track you know start at your furthest point get that to grade and set that as your benchmark yes and then you're just following that grade the whole way out yeah you know? and once you get it to the grade just touch it again and work your way out I mean, obviously the, the 3D systems are nice if you're working on huge site jobs. You know, it's another yes. tablet up here. You can literally plug the whole design file in and you basically, the machine runs itself, you know, on GPS. But for the smaller stuff, residential, smaller commercial, I think this, TD, this uh, 2D grade control is great. Especially a guy like me who's a one man band, it saves having to hop out and, you know, check the laser all the time. Yeah, exactly, because I know him over there, that's his job. So he's basically, you know, losing his job. <laughs> While I was gone, James ripped the stump apart a little bit with this machine so we could fit it into the truck because it was a little wide. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I might have to Go down with the thumb, so curl the thumb. Whoa. This one was so big. Wow, this thing is, that's a big stump. Not sure. So this machine has like the push button thumb on the joystick, you know, like the roller, it says like tool on the screen. They call it a tool implement. Um, I like it, I really do. I, uh, I'm just nervous about this big giant stump because I still have to, Okay, so he likes to run the machine with the door closed. I gotta break some of this. These are white pine stumps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to Nip off the thing a little bit. Try to fit it in the um, truck. Stand it up on its side. So let me uh, 
Um, let's see, down with the button. See, I have a foot pedal on my machine. This is nice. Down, whoa, whoa, easy, Steve, easy. Let's see what happens if I let it loose. A little. All right, so that one can lean there, okay? And then I uh, pick my phone up off the floor here. Uh, this monitor is very nice. Look, I can see James and my son Bryson talking back there. Uh-oh, cancel. I don't know what it was doing. It was probably trying to, you know, order french fries or something. I, I don't know, I'm not I'm not a tech, tech guy here, but I will learn. I will have him show me all of the uh, technical stuff. And uh, this is just gonna be one uh, introduction video um, to this machine because uh, him and I have a job that we're going to be doing um, and uh, working together on, so there'll be more. So that guy is probably gonna have to go on his own. I'm going for that stuff. So, if you notice, I like to use my feet all the time. I'm not, uh... Do you want to cut that one off? We're sitting on, um, unstable ground. So that's mostly why I'm rocking. No, 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 the log! You want me to do it the other way? Want me to flip it over? to load the truck without destroying the truck. So that's going to conclude it for this short little um, review of his new cat uh, 317. It's brand new 2022? Uh, yeah. 22? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty impressive machine. I like it. I really like it. I mean, um, as far as power and everything, the thing is just, uh, I, I would, like, don't want to... A couple times I thought I was going to pull my truck over just pulling a stump around. Yeah. It's crazy powerful. Um, you said this is one of how many in New England? I believe this is, don't quote me on this, this is one of ten in New England, and I know this is one of two on Cape Cod where we're located. Cool. Um, so it's a fairly new machine. I'm sure you guys have, you know, they got rid of the Cat 316, uh, so this is its replacement. There's the next gen model, and there's a GC model, which is a little cheaper, a little less horsepower with no technology. Um, obviously, kind of a stupid little stumping job loading trucks today, but uh, we got a nice demo site package coming up that I think Steve's going to help me on, so hopefully we'll be able to get another nice video out for you guys. Yeah, guys, we'll definitely stay tuned because, uh, like James was saying, we got another uh, job that we're going to be doing together, uh, demo package. And um, got a couple of nice seller hole jobs coming up. So yeah, really, I have that one. I have that one that we're going to do. Really that. be able to test the grade control and that and, would and be a see. good one because that's a big seller hole. Yep. Um, so you guys will be seeing more of this and you'll be seeing more of James, my buddy here. And we'll catch you on the next one.